Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Well, I hope you survived another weekend. Good morning. This is John Frenet. This is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, and it is Monday, January 8th. This morning, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. On Friday, BG&E said that they would take the money they saved from the federal tax reduction and apply it to customers. Good news. They're going to be spending $82 million in annual tax savings. But the bad news is that only equates to about $2.31 per customer per month. I suppose it's something. Anne Arundel County Police and the Baltimore Division of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms are looking for four people accused of stealing 13 firearms from a Hanover Armory early yesterday morning. The burglars broke into the Hanover Armory at 1327 Ashton Road, right near BWI, about 6 a.m. yesterday and stole firearms that include rifles and handguns. A combined reward of up to $10,000 is being offered. Any tips can be reported to the ATF at one 888 ATF tips, which is 888-283-8477. Anne Arundel County Police are offering up to a $10,000 reward for information about a shooting that paralyzed a college football player and wounded a 17-year-old on New Year's Eve. Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia, confirmed that Larry Aaron, a 19-year-old redshirt freshman, was among the victims. His mother, Melissa Aaron, told the Herald Dispatch in Huntington that her son was paralyzed by a bullet lodged in his spine. Aaron is from Columbia, Maryland. A 17-year-old male was also shot, and the Anne Arundel County Police Department said anybody with any kind of cell phone recordings, photographs, or information should contact the police. If you live in Millersville, you may be a little bit slow getting mail. There was a two-alarm blaze, and I mean a blaze, in the post office on Nagel's Road on Friday evening. Firefighters responded at about 9 p.m. They found heavy fire and smoke when they arrived. There were no reported injuries, but... Fire was through the roof, and from photographs that we had seen and actually have posted at ionanapolis.net, it looks like the building could be a total loss. Anne Arundel County fire investigators, as well as post office investigators, are investigating. Governor Hogan plans to crack down on violent crime and give some support to victims of violent crime in this session. On Friday, he announced that he supports a bill that will allow women who become pregnant as a result of a rape to terminate their attacker's parental rights and is willing to sign it as soon as the General Assembly approves it. The measure has failed nine times, including in the final hours of the last legislative session, but this year it is a top priority of the session, which begins on Wednesday. Both Senate President Mike Miller and Speaker Bush are backing the bill as well. In addition to the Parents' Rights Bill, Hogan proposed two other ones that deal with sexual assault and human trafficking. One measure, which failed to pass the legislature again last year, cracks down on repeat sex offenders, and the other would classify human trafficking as a violent crime. Good news for crime victims in Maryland. Baltimore City Schools have been having a hard time in the last couple weeks with no heat, and a GoFundMe account now has been set up to help students stay warm in Baltimore City Schools. WBAL reported Friday that the money is intended for space heaters, hats, and coats. At this point, nearly $70,000 has been raised. The fundraising goal was $20,000. The fund was set up by Coppin State student Samira Jones, Morgan State student Valeria Arum, and city school teacher Aaron Mabin. City Schools Chief of Operations Ken Scroggins said that the district is not against the fund, but they're uncertain how the money is going to be administered. If your Maryland driver's license or ID is up for renewal, make sure that you read the insert in your renewal notice very carefully. Starting this month, Maryland must comply with the Real ID Act and different documentation to prove your citizenship may be required for renewal. The Real ID Act is a federal law that establishes a certain minimum security standards for license issuance and production. And of course, as you know, these things are needed for boarding airplanes, traveling around the country, etc. In the year of hashtag MeToo, the females led the Golden Globes last night. 
The female led three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, and Big Little Lies were the big winners at Sunday's Golden Globes, which was dominated by the recent sexual misconduct allegations in Hollywood. Three billboards took home four trophies, including the Best Movie Drama, Best Actress in a Drama for Frances McDormand, and Best Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture for Sam Rockwell. Big Little Lies also won four trophies, Best Limited TV Series and Acting for Nicole Kidman, Laura Dern, and Alexander Skarsgård. Other winners were Lady Bird, Best Motion Picture for Musical or Comedy, Handmaid's Tale, Best Television Series for Drama, and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Best TV Series for Musical or Comedy. All of the movies and TV shows that won last night were female-led. It was funny, I was looking back at the Farmer's Almanac prediction for winter, and they said that there were five dates that we needed to watch out for this winter as far as snowstorms go. And we'll see how they are, and we'll see what George Young has to say in a little bit. But the dates you want to watch out for are January 20th to the 23rd, February 4th to the 7th, February 16th to the 19th, March 1st to the 3rd, and a late snowstorm, March 20th to 23rd. All right, let's get into it. We've got George Young with DMV Weather right here on tap. Hi, I'm Anne Arundel County State's Attorney Wes Adams. The heroin and opioid epidemic has touched every family, including mine. That's why I've teamed up with our county executive, Steve Hsu, and our Annapolis Mayor, Mike Panalides, to do something about it. My job is to make sure that the drug dealers who are peddling the slow death of heroin are locked up and off our streets. But there's more to it. We have to stop the cycle of addiction at its source. We have to talk to our children about the dangers of prescription drugs and pay attention to the signs of addiction. Is your child withdrawn? Have you noticed spoons that have gone missing? Or maybe found spoons in odd places with black residue on them? Go to denialisdeadly.org right now or attend one of our Not My Child presentations occurring all around the county. You could save a life. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey, everyone. This is George from DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast for Monday, January 8th. Finally, we see an end to the big Arctic outbreak for Annapolis and Anne Arundel County this week starting with temps warming into the 30s today after a stretch of teens and 20s for highs the last several days, and then into the 40s Tuesday and Wednesday before 50s Thursday, Friday, and even into the weekend, making it at least a 15-day streak of consecutive days of below average temps, maybe even longer depending on whether or not we get to 42 degrees or above for highs tomorrow or Wednesday before definitely getting above average on Thursday with some regular rain showers and highs in the 50s. But until then, we have another winter weather situation on our hands with a likelihood of some mixed precipitation coming in later today in the form of freezing rain, sleet, and maybe even some snow mixed in before regular rain takes over. The timing now for anything that does fall is most likely between 12 p.m. and 10 p.m. with a tighter focus on the 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. time frame. And while not a ton of moisture is associated with the system that will move through from our west, anything that does fall will have an impact on travel very quickly since surface temps of everything on the ground level are very cold after the past couple of weeks of Arctic air. So while there will be no problems this morning for schools or the morning commute to work, start to plan now for a real possibility that there could be some changes ahead in the afternoon in the form of possible early dismissals for school systems as well as an impact on the afternoon or evening rush hour. So be safe out there. Even a glaze of freezing rain and sleet will turn local roadways very slippery in a hurry. So plan ahead and always err on the side of caution. Okay, that's it for us today. Be sure to download our free weather app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather and follow us 24-7, 365 on our website at dmvweather.com or on Twitter or Facebook so you can always stay weather-informed, especially later today as we help you stay up-to-date by the hour on the potential winter weather situation in the afternoon. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast. Make it a great, safe, warmer week ahead, but remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Did you know that more than 1,200 mental health patients had to be transferred last year by AAMC to facilities outside our area because these facilities do not exist right here in our own area? 
Denim and Diamonds is a fabulous, fun evening under the stars to support expanding mental health care in our community. AAMC Foundation proudly thanks RXNT for their generous $50,000 exclusive presenting sponsorship. Get more info at aamcdenimanddiamonds.org. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at noon. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.